Greetings. Welcome to our presentation. My name is Jasmin Jahic, and I will introduce our framework for automatic extraction of concurrency-related software architecture properties. We live in the era of concurrent software, and compared to sequential software, concurrent software is more complex because concurrent software parts, where we mainly focus on threads and multi-threaded software, concurrent software parts influence each other. In order to develop, in order to manage, to change, and to test such software, it is important to understand coupling between different software parts, or in our case, concurrent threads. The main cause for this inter-thread influence and dependencies between threads are data dependencies or shared function functionality between the threads. The problem that we're trying to solve here is that comprehension of the dependencies between threads is hard because in its raw form, there are many dependencies between the threads, for example, hundreds and thousands, and visualizing all of this just in its raw form does not help. And because it's not possible sometimes to understand what are the impor important effects of these dependencies that are later propagated into software and influence other properties of software. Therefore, the solution that we suggest is to use visual representation and combine it with the concept of abstraction from software architecture. Our approach consists of these components. First, we have a component that analyzes communication patterns between the threads. These are, for example, a producer consumer pattern. Then, based on this, we have a component that creates logical representation of raw data. That means we have a logical roots that translate raw communication patterns. So these patterns, which are on the source code or on the execution trace code, are then abstracted into logical dependencies between concurrent software components. Logical threads are also abstracted into logical components. Finally, what we do is we use different views from software architecture domain and introduce some new views because we want to show some other perspective on the system to visualize our components that we have extracted using logical rules. In this slide, we see an overview of our work. So the first part is a combination of a static and dynamic analysis. It is based on our previous work on a framework called BOSMI. BOSMI analyzes software under test using LVM interpretation and it reconstructs control flow graph. Then it executes software tests and records execution trace. Dynamic analysis that the BOSM is able to provide includes coverage analysis, analysis of shared memory allocations between threads. It uses a razor lux, a razor lux algorithm for this analysis, and it relies on the identification and usage of several types of synchronization mechanisms. So BOSMI provides execution trace, details about the shared uh, memory locations between threads, and synchronization mechanisms for our analysis. Then our analysis takes this information from BOSMI and identifies communication patterns between the threads based on shared variable access and applies our rules for abstracting concurrency-related architectural significant properties. Finally, our approach generates several architecture views to visualize this analysis data. Our goal is to take raw dependencies and raw functionality of threads from execution trace and uh, the static analysis and abstract data into logical data and threads or threads functions into logical components. That is why we have this separation between technical data and components and abstract technological data and logical components. Now, in order to do this, we have created seven logical rules. There are details of these rules in the paper. I will not explain all of them here. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to explain just two of them. For example, rule number three, according to this, this rule, operations that threads perform on data are grouped either into input, output, or process. So for example, if there is a, some chunk of data that threads are constantly using to read, then we can group this chunk of data according to this input rule into a logical, comp logical data, uh, data component. Another example is the rule number six. This is an interesting rule because it helps to identify the relationship between the data dependencies and control flow. So the idea of this rule is that if threads are accessing shared data, but only under certain conditions, then it's possible to group these accesses 
according to the conditions of the axis. So for example, there's some logical condition or logical decision and threads are always accessing data, shared data uh, only under these, then we could say that there is a condition which con is basically uh, conditioning access to this shared data. So that's why it's possible to group this uh, according to this logical rule. Now, when it comes to the representation of the visualization, we are using, we are basically um, basing our elements on the UML2. And uh, we are also building on the views that are introduced by Rosansky and Woods and the views of the embedded modeling profile, some uh, view type that is created by Fraunhofer as Institute. That is why we have these uh, views here. For example, we have a context view, so which describes the overview of the system, higher, highest abstraction level, functional view with the main functionalities, technical view with the uh, concrete logical components and data. And finally, we have execution timeline view. Now, on the other side, what we can see here is that we have a different levels of abstraction. And some of these views are connected with some different levels of abstraction, depending what we want to show. So, for example, on the lowest level, we have the raw visualization of execution trace. So, there is no abstraction on this uh, lowest level. On the level number one, we have logical groups, either logical components or logical data. On the level two, we have logical components and uh, we show how they interact with technical or logical data groups. And on the uh, third level, we have interaction purely between logical components and logical data. Now we're going to show a demo of uh, how our framework looks like. So what we see here is an overview of uh, our tool where we can see source code, where we can see the trace produced by BOSME and the shared variables which BOSME has identified. Now on this screen, we see the raw visualization of the previous example. So that means that we have data which is accessed by threads and we have threads with their IDs here. Now, this is one of the views which shows if we take logical rules and we apply them and if we generate a view with our approach, we have significantly lower number of the elements. That means logical components, which are threads, and the logical data, which is shared memory locations abstracted according to some of the rules. In order to evaluate our approach, we have used two open source benchmarks. The first one is Rose's benchmark, and the second one is Tackle Bench. Also, in order to test some of the corner cases, we have created two of our own benchmarks. You can find all the information on, the, on this link here. We wanted to perform two types of the analysis. In the first type of the analysis, we had qualitative measurement. So that means we wanted to see what is the adequacy of the abstraction level that our views are providing. Uh, different views are enabling us to focus on different concerns when it comes to the system. So for example, uh, we can see a very abstract view of the system with grouped logical components and overall dependencies, for example, the context view, or we can zoom in further to logical components and see the, how they're closer. Uh, we, we can see the components that are closer to the implementation. Important thing to mention here is that this tool takes care of the traceability between these different levels. The second type of the evaluation that we wanted to perform was to quantify how many elements are removed from screens once we have a different uh, levels of the abstraction, once we have a different use. So for that, we are using this formula here. The results show the uh, reduction in a different number of the elements from different abstraction levels when compared to the case where we would uh, visualize everything where we would have a raw visualization. So that means without any abstraction. So as we can see, the reductions are significant. Then we have evaluated this qualitatively and we have verified that the level of details is still appropriate to make different conclusions based on the different views that we have in our system. In conclusion, we can say that our approach enables reasoning about dependencies in concurrent software systems by abstracting those dependencies according to logical rules, which are based on communication patterns between threads. The benefits do not only include the reduction of the number of the elements, but also they enable observing the system from different perspectives. And these different perspectives are uh, related to those views that we have. And those views gives us possibility to see different points of concerns about the system. 
there were some corner cases which we have discussed in the paper. For example, it could be that uh, in some corner cases, we would have a higher number of elements of some views than in the original row. Uh, visualization or abstraction might lead to hiding of some details. Uh, we have discussed these cases and in the future we want to explore more of these corner cases and cover more pat patterns of coupling and dependencies between the threads. So that's uh, my presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, you have the contact detail here. Looking forward to take your questions uh, now uh, after this presentation. And just to emphasize, we are always looking for co uh, collaboration. So if you have concrete ideas how to apply this, especially in industry corner cases, we are here. Thank you.